Sir, do you know why I pulled you over? Uh, speeding? No, it's because your intro sucks. Um, Please step out onto the curbside. Hey everyone, welcome to the Curbside Podcast, the podcast where we talk about cars and everything to do with cars. My name is Jeff, I drive a 2004 Honda S2000, and I am your Taiwanese American Southern Californian. And I am Andrew, I drive a 2014 Evo 10 MR and a 2015 Subaru BRZ, living up here in the Bay Area. Yay, how's the Evo going? Uh, expensive. (laughs) (laughs) Why? Why? Uh, well, when you were up here, you know, we went to do the transmission service. That alone was $500 in materials and another 200 for labor. So $700 transmission service for an automatic transmission. Lovely. On a $20,000 car. <laughs> oh, gosh. How many of those do you need to do? Once a year. Is recommended. Holy crap. Yeah. $700 a year for... Yeah. So if you own the car another 20 years, you'll have paid more for transmission services yes. than the actual car. <laughs> yes. Don't ever talk about that again. <laughs> and then on top of that, I, uh, I uh, swapped out the brake pads for some new ones. Um, I went with the Hawk Performance brake pads. And those were just under $300 for pads alone. I did the service myself, which wasn't too bad, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, another three hundred dollars, and you don't have to go with Hog Performance pads. You can go to like AutoZone and get like some Duralast pads. I was reading on forums, and uh, if you go with Duralast, apparently they have like a lifetime warranty where it's like you buy it once and you just get free pads. Just say they're not working or something, or just what? saying, <laughs> just just say they're squeaking, like oh, it's making a weird noise, and they'll give you new pads for free. <laughs> Wait, how does that work? No, what? I, I have no idea. Duralast or AutoZone has like a crazy warranty. You just go in like, hey, my brakes are squeaking, sir. That's uh, that's what happens when you use brakes and you run out of brakes. No, nah, no, nah, they're squeaking. They're defective. <laughs> yeah. But, sir, look, look, my brake pads don't even have any braking material on them anymore. <laughs> If you're watching the podcast on YouTube, you'll notice I look 10 years old because I shaved my face. (laughs) And I'm very self-conscious about it right now, actually. Uh, More reasons why you guys should check out our YouTube channel if you're not. But anyways, this is the Curbside Podcast, the podcast where we talk about cars. Do you know why I like cars? Because they go fast? Yes, but like in in terms of talking about them, cars are like, they, they don't have like the same weight as things like talking about politics the news and whatnot you'll argue about them but at the end of the day it's just a car yeah your conversation ultimately doesn't matter no not at all if you're losing friends because of arguing about cars (laughs) there's some (laughs) (laughs) there's something like deeply inherently wrong there yeah but it just makes you kind of think how weird are car people i've heard an ana- analogy like a couple years ago and it's always stuck with me because i thought it was hilarious um this person or it was a tweet someone said car guys are the equivalent to uh horse girls <laughs> <laughs> you know like there's like those weird horse girls that like run around on like four on, on all fours and, yeah like, car guys were just like <laughs> 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 it, it, like if it, when you come down to it like you we have to admit being a car enthusiast is the weirdest thing ever you just take in a form of transportation <laughs> and been like let's talk about it yeah, let's have arguments like, about it. <laughs> yeah and thinking it's like super super awesome <laughs> and even more than that i think there's like okay so there's like the car purists right the people that don't like like ferrari owners or whatever they take the car from factory as it is and like they talk about it i think that's great even more weird is people like me the modified car people where there's just like an infinite amount of additional opinions 
is so dumb. Like stance versus track guys. It's like one of the most toxic conversations in the car world. <laughs> <laughs> you are dumb because you don't take your, tr- your car to the track. And, like, and then, t- 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 to even begin with, it's like we take this perfectly like functional, usable car and we <laughs> slam it to the ground, making it less useful, less comfortable. Uh, we scrape everything. We crack oil pans. We ah, it's just that's so dumb. <laughs> like why? Why do we like it? Because it looks cool. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> We just take a form that, of transportation that gets us from A to B, and we make it the most complicated thing ever. Yeah, <laughs> extremely <laughs> obsessive about it. Yeah, I thought about this. I like I brought this up in like our little group chat thing, where it's just like I asked you guys, like, have you ever guys thought about like if you look at a car and just like that's a car? Like, what would that be like? I can't imagine that life. Like, yeah. I can't imagine going on the road. And just seeing a bunch of shapes that move you around. I want to know what it's, what that's like again. Yeah, right. Just for a little bit. Because <laughs> like it's impossible for me now. And like so many of my friends that aren't car enthusiasts are just like, dude, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, did you see that 370 Nismo? Like, which one? The white one or the blue one? <laughs> It's a perfect example, right? It's one of the, it's like you see on those forums where people put up a picture of like my girlfriend says I just drive a old Nissan and it's a GTR. And yeah. you're like, "Oh, snap, dude. She's stupid. She she doesn't know he's driving a GTR." But if you yeah. really look at it from the outside, no, he really just drives an old <laughs> Nissan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like on our episode with Doug, like people driving past Jay Leno in a McLaren F1, and they're like, oh my god, Jay Leno. Dude, fuck Jay Leno. (laughs) But at the same time, you have to really ask yourself, like, what would the world be like without car enthusiasts? We'd be in horse-drawn carriages. Or just really boring cars. I think it would be like, do you remember back when Subaru did that one commercial? They were advertising a car called the Mediocrity. No. No. They 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 had they made all these ads about this mm-hmm. like this boring car. It just looked like a car, like a Corolla mixed mm-hmm. with a Camry, mixed with like whatever <laughs> the heck was on the market then. And it was beige. The interior was beige. The seats uh-huh. were beige. And the big advertising point was like, this is everything else on the market. Buy it in Prezza. If you think about it, if there's no car enthusiasts, if there's no one really passionate about cars. Like, why would you bother designing them? Why bother putting all these big horsepower numbers, these fancy yeah. names? Like, if if there's no car enthusiasts, there's no point of that. World like, full of, like, geoprisms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just need a basic car that gets me from A to B. That, that's it. Yeah. I think car enthusiasts, even when they're not, like, a huge part of the market, they really drive sort of what the market looks like. I'm just, I'm just like, thinking about it right now and, like, Everyone, to an extent, has to be a car enthusiast. When you buy a car, you're not just like, that one. Why? I don't know. Because it moves. (laughs) I I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. There might be people out there just like, yeah, I want a box with wheels that moves. I guess that's how you end up with like a mirage. Yeah. Yeah. Or you're financially strapped, but we'll not get into that. But I mean, Um, like, you could, there's still other choices (laughs) if you're financially strapped. Still Besides options. a mirage. So there's yeah. no like real reason if you like the way cars look or whatnot to buy a mirage. You'd buy a fit, you'd buy even a Versa, a, a Yaris. <laughs> but if you're just like, I need a car today. Oh, look, there's a Mitsubishi dealer. They sell cars. Yeah. Hey, I need a car for some amount of money. Well, here's a mirage. Cool. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what would the world be like without cars? I don't think there would be no cars. Well, there's a, we'd have to have a way to get around. Yeah, horses. <laughs> <laughs> no, <feet>. no. We... <laughs> anyway, we still need a faster way to get around. Yeah, I guess. But there would be no need for a Lamborghini, a Ferrari. No. There would be no need for a Miata, a Civic Type <laughs> R. BMW M3s, basically, you know, the backbone 
of a car enthusiast world. <laughs> All the cool ones, there would be yeah. no need for them. Yeah, you just need a Camry. Dude, like, even, even like, cars that aren't that special, like, Evos, even. Like, my whole life, I've been like, oh, my God. Like, I'll stop in my tracks and, like, oh, my God, Evo. I'll watch it drive away. How do I not do that? If I see something <laughs> cool, I'm just going to be like, no. Nope. Uh, <laughs> yeah i don't care about that that's stupid <laughs> right like people inherently look at ferraris and lamborghinis mm-hmm. unless you know you're salty about it and then you force yourself not to look like i find that even people who aren't car people i don't know if it's just when they hang out with car people they'll try to pretend to be car people or are they really <laughs> mm-hmm. just interested yeah they could be trying there's a lot to learn i don't know how we got to where we are now how we know like engine codes chassis codes all this kind of shit i don't know how that happened but it started somewhere i don't know how do we get here i have no idea i really have no idea yeah because all i remember from my my journey as a car enthusiast was i like tires and wheels <laughs> And then I watched Top Gear, and then I'm like, I like cars. And then, you know, Andrew starts watching lots of modifying videos, and I'm like, I know some engine codes now. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's just a strange hobby. Yeah, and actually yesterday, um, my girlfriend, Mari, we were talking, um, because I was watching this video, and I was telling her, like, oh, I'm watching this car or whatever, and then she just, like, kind of subtly mentioned like oh i wish i knew more about cars but it's so intimidating like i don't know anything about anything i just told her like just if you're interested in it first of all tell me and like i'll teach you some things but also just like you have to surround yourself with that kind of stuff if you're really into it just dive into it go to a car show make car friends like stop people that are at gas stations with cool cars they'll talk to you about their cars all fucking day i promise there's been so many random like old white guys that come up to me in my when I'm in my BRZ, you're like, oh, well, it sounds healthy. What you got in there? And then <laughs> we just talk about it forever. They're really disappointed that it's a two liter. <laughs> like, honestly, if you if you want to learn more about it, don't be intimidated. I know it's really intimidating. My first time going to a car meet, I was just standing there <laughs> like, hey, you guys, cars, huh? Pretty cool. <laughs> I, I promise you guys. I mean, like some some car enthusiasts are just dicks. But mm-hmm. but a lot of car enthusiasts are people who want to talk about cars, but they don't have anyone to talk about cars with. I think it's a good thing that there are people like us that are into cars. Think about this. If there weren't car enthusiasts, you wouldn't have the safety features that we have now. You wouldn't have True. all the fluffy fluff accessories and shit like that that we have now. Yeah, You wouldn't have like comfortable cars probably <laughs> you wouldn't have <laughs> forms of entertainment like racing well you're probably a car enthusiast if you like racing you just wouldn't have any of that stuff yeah i feel like you definitely wouldn't have off-roading because no. right so that's stupid. like <laughs> <laughs> right? you just most off-roaders don't actually go anywhere they take a loop on a trail <laughs> yeah they 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 like drive off the road to a place that's purposely difficult to drive. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, drive through it and then go home. Right? It's like, that's what roads are for. No, <laughs> I don't want to drive on a normal road. <laughs> yeah, I want to roll this bitch off of a rock. Car people are so dumb, dude. Yeah, yeah, and but, it's like you, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have drifting. You wouldn't have like what what is drifting? You're purposely putting your car. You're losing control of crashing, your car. dude. Yeah, you're losing control of your car, regaining control, destroying your tires, <laughs> wearing the shit out of your motor, your clutch, everything, and then you're like, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> you realize you everything just turn without breaking traction. Yeah. <laughs> Everything car enthusiasts like to do is completely pointless. But I think, with that being said, it's still important because they shape all the cool things that a normal consumer would want to buy. Yeah, you would be surprised how much of the safety features and like just performance technology has trickled down from F1. Yeah, there's people who aren't car enthusiasts who are like, oh, check out my awesome car. I got paddles on the Camry. It's weird, but it's important. But also... You know, if you guys aren't into cars and somehow you've listened to this, I I encourage you to look into the world of cars because, yes, they are, you know, just transportation and whatnot. But when you look behind a lot of things, a lot of the times, cars have a story behind them. 
like the Ford GT. Yeah. Like, how many more people know the story behind that because of a movie about cars driving in circles? And uh, for all the car enthusiast people that have non-car enthusiast friends, next time they tell you, like, why do you care about it so much? It's just a car. You slap them. <laughs> <laughs> And then tell them to get back. <laughs> tell them to either start biking to work or walk to work or start riding a horse to work. Because <laughs> without people like you and me, they wouldn't have the car that they're driving. So, Exactly. Exactly. Or just tell them to get in. I don't know. What's the boringest car you could think of? Chevy Aveo. Yeah. Go drive that to work. See how you yes. like it. Then yeah. come back to us like car enthusiasts are dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's just a car. <laughs> My white car is the same as your white car. It's all white with four wheels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. Shall we go to our break? Yeah. All right. Welcome to our break. Um, as always, you can find us at thecurbsidepodcast.com. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing, but yeah, you can find our stuff there. Um, you can follow us on our social medias. Our Instagram is at the curbside podcast. Our Twitter is at curbside pod. Facebook at the curbside podcast. And you can also email us if you want to talk to us, give us a sponsor. Uh, emails the curbside podcast at gmail.com. Yep. Hit us up. Cool talk about cars all right with that let's go back to the show all right the news and to start off the news (laughs) i am proud to be an american because the new (laughs) broncos for me you know, <laughs> do you know again during these times? I'm glad there's at least one reason to be proud to be an American because this week <laughs> Ford came out with the 2021 Bronco, and my gosh, have you seen the thing, Andrew? Yes, it's it's amazing. It's like it's, the perfect follow up to the original. Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's fantastic. Uh, I watched the live revealing thing on their YouTube channel and (laughs) the video they released. You know how in most like Jeep commercials or Land Rover commercials, all these off-road commercials, they'll usually do like uh, their cars are freaking rock crawling, low speed Mm -hmm. stuff. In the Bronco video, they are ripping the Bronco through (laughs) with all the (laughs) terrain. Like the thing's like bouncing around. and. It, it harkens back to that original Bronco design. I just always loved that design, and they finally brought it back for this new generation, and it looks fantastic. It, it, it just keeps getting better the more you read into this thing, okay? So here's one thing to start off. The names. The names are great, okay? So we have the Bronco, the base model, right? But the trim levels include names like Big Ben, Black Diamond, Outer Ooh. Banks, Badlands, and Wild Track. Ooh, that one's <laughs> good. And for every trim level, you could get what's called the Sasquatch package. What's that? So it's just like an off roady package, but I'll tell you what that includes. Uh, it gets you, on the base model, from factory, 35-inch tires. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Like... <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, Bronco <laughs> also can get you uh, a Haas system, high performance off road stability suspension, which has, that, I like think, King shocks. <laughs> it's got Bilstein adaptable shocks or whatnot. Oh they God. say it's the same thing that's on their trophy trucks that run around in the, the, the wild or whatever, which sounds fantastic. Yeah. And it comes with a goat mode. You mean it crawls on everything? <laughs> I was like, because it's an acronym of like greatest of all time mode. No, yeah. it's a uh, it's kind of like Land Rover's all terrain thing. 
and mm-hmm. GOAT stands for goes over any type of terrain. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, this thing is aimed... Okay, we, there's the Bronco Sport, but we won't talk about that because that looks kind of like a Ford Explorer with a Bronco's face glued to it. But mm-hmm. there's the two-door and the four-door, okay? So let me ask you this. Which one would you get, Andrew, if you were to get yourself a Bronco? I would get a four-door. Yeah, so for me, okay, I love the way the two-door looks because when yeah. I think of the old Bronco, that's what I think. The silhouette right. of the short, right. stubby little car with gigantic yeah. wheels. Yeah. But practically speaking, I would have to get the four-door. Yeah. And the four-door, it doesn't look bad, right? It looks no, plenty good. Like, it looks fantastic, actually. It's just that the only thing I'd be missing was that nostalgic, like, shorty Bronco look. Anyways, this thing is aimed square at the Jeep Wrangler. And I think yeah, I was finally... about to say, the Jeep Wranglers are uh, shaking their doors off right now. <laughs> yeah, because the last time the Wrangler actually had a competitor was uh, never. Yeah. <laughs> there has never been, I don't think, a direct competitor to the Wrangler. People are saying, oh, the Defenders, the, the, the British Wrangler competitor. It's not. It costs $50,000. But this thing costs starts at 28500 which is only a couple hundred dollars more than a Wrangler. And there were certain things that they you could tell aim straight at the Wrangler. The fact that you could take all four doors off of the Bronco four-door and put them mm-hmm. in the car with you while you're driving along. So you don't leave your doors at home. One of the things on the Wrangler is if you take the front doors off, the mirrors come off with the front doors. Huh. And the Bronco was like, you can keep the mirrors on. <laughs> 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 it's got independent front suspension, so no live axle, uh, which the Wrangler has. And they're like, independent suspension is better for handling and on-road capabilities. You could get 35-inch tires optional, which is not an option on the Wrangler. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if if you're if you're a person working on at Jeep right now, designing the next Wrangler, you are probably scrambling you no around. What to do. You have no <laughs> yeah. idea what to do right now. And you know what? I think this thing looks a lot better than a Wrangler does. Yeah, it looks like a more complete car. I don't know how to describe it. Right? It just looks more. Uh... Yeah, it like just, you could live with this thing, and it's not just a Jeep. And this thing already has Ford claims for the two door and the four door already over two hundred aftermarket accessories available. Holy shit! The car's not even out yet. You could get from factory things like GoPro mounts that just go straight into the car. It's just, I want one very badly. And, you know, unlike the Rivian and unlike the Defender, this is something I could probably afford in a not distant future. I imagine there will be dealer markup. Oh, definitely. So you could reserve this car now. You could reserve it on their website for $100 refundable deposit. Comes to you 2021. And by the end of 2020, you could start picking your options. I was so tempted to reserve mine because I was like, 2021, maybe I'll have enough money by then to make the monthly payments. But they were like, you have to pick your options by the end of 2020. I'm like, never mind. That's (laughs) that's not happening. But uh, you could reserve it now. But the thing is, the first editions, first day, it was already full. And also, when I went on the original reservation site, it crashed. It was done. (laughs) So a lot of people are very excited about this. And I wouldn't like... The amount of Jeep Wranglers you see running around on the road right now, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if there's an equal amount of Broncos or more. Yeah. What are some performance specs on it? Like, what kind of engine does it have in there? So, it it starts with a V6, uh, 2.4 liter, I think, 2.3 liter, something like that. Anyway, that's not the important part. You could get optioned up a 2.7 liter twin turbo V6, making 310 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. (laughs) It also comes base, I think, with a 7-speed manual, but it's not your typical manual because it would be 6 speeds, reverse, and a crawl gear. Like a super high or a super low. Yeah, so like a thing where you could probably throw it in crawl, get out of the Jeep, and walk alongside of it. (laughs) Does it have self-deflating tires? (laughs) (laughs) No, I do not think it does. That is an H1. Not cool anymore. (laughs) 
Like, this is something I feel like... Like, I feel like Land Rover, when they brought out the new Defender, mm-hmm. should have had a version like this. I feel like Hummer, when they decided to start making more than just the H1, should have had something like this. Like Yeah, like, but the, the SUV market wasn't where it's at now. That's true. It definitely is. It, like, this is a perfect time for it, because the SUV market's booming. People are liking more and more off-roady things. That's why, like, FJ Cruiser prices are going up now. Yeah. So yeah. this is a and prime... people are looking for like retros. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So this is perfect prime time to be releasing a new Bronco, and they came in guns blazing with yeah. with features, dude. <laughs> yeah. I can't What's... wait. I need one so bad. This is kind of off topic, but it's just it's really interesting to me that American companies over the last five or ten years have been really successful with doing retros of their old cars, right? Like, like Japanese, the Japanese market cannot replicate that. The the new GTR is nothing like what the R thirty two three and four or thirty two yeah. thirty three and four were. The NSX is nothing like what the old NSX is. Even the new yeah. Supra, like you can say, oh, it has an inline six. It's nothing yeah, it's like not. what the old Supra was. I feel like the Japanese manufacturers they capitalize off the name itself more than anything. Obviously, the Bronco yeah. they did too, but like. That's a Bronco. <laughs> right? They captured the essence of what a Bronco used to be. I feel like the way Americans do retros, they just look amazing. The Ford yeah. GT, the Ford Bronco, Dodge Challenger, the Ford Mustang, the Chevy Camaro. So good. So good. Yeah, and even like uh, Corvettes up until the C8, yeah. super recognizably a Corvette, and they all looked good. Americans are really making good cars. I'm going to go with Parth right now. Like, hey, I might yeah. start buying more American cars. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, everything that's coming out of the Japanese market now, honestly, is not that interesting. Everything is boring from them now. They're like, they've always been good at making, ec- like, economy cars. And, like, that's their bread and butter. But, like, come on. It's getting right, so seriously. boring. <laughs> seriously. Um, well, speaking about boring um Hyundai <laughs> news <laughs> I have to do it they did they do this to themselves honestly you know Hyundai we say it's boring but we always talk about them for some reason because they have stupid news um <laughs> Hyundai just like Kia or was it Kia I don't even know anymore but they are taking something that has existed for literally hundreds of years <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and trying to change it to be new and interesting. Hyundai developed a manual transmission without a clutch pedal, so an automatic. Wow. And instead of the paddles, you have a gear shift. So a single clutch manual, I mean automated manual, with an H pattern. Yes. Why? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Many many companies before have done this already, and it has never, ever in the history of cars been well received. No, never. Yeah. I know, like, yeah. I think Saab did it once, yeah. way back when. Basically, same idea. H pattern shifter, no clutch. Yeah. Terrible, from yeah. what I heard. I never drove it, but... Yeah, and it's just like, why are they doing this? Luckily, I read here, it's not coming to the U.S., mainly because... The, the market for a manual transmission isn't that big, um, but it will be introduced into the Indian market, making its debut with the Hyundai Venue. I can okay. understand maybe where, like, people buy manual cars because it's the economic thing to do, but you're telling me they're going to price this cheaper? Maybe they might, but from a, a driver's perspective, people buy manuals because they want to feel <laughs> like they're driving a fucking manual. Right, so like I'm, I'm just trying to figure out who this is for. Cause if you it, usually when you want an H pattern, you you want a you want a clutch pedal because you know that's the part of like if you're just rowing through gears without a cr- clutch pedal, what's wrong with a plus and minus button on yeah. your gear stick? Like what? Cause you're like like yes, let's save money. Versus, like, let's say, versus a automated manual with a single clutch, right? Mm-hmm. Save money by not automating the gear shifting part. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But wouldn't you save more money by not automating the clutch at all? Also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My my thought is that it's going to be introduced into a market where people want to buy a cheap but nice car, right? Hyundai. Yeah. They make nice cars. 
um, but they people want to save costs by going with a standard transmission. They do all of this R and D. They spend all this money on R and D to make this automated tra- or manual, which will probably bump up the cost. Yeah, making this whole thing completely pointless. Like, who is this for? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really is- don't understand. Hyundai. Anyone listening at Hyundai, help. What like? <laughs> Like, I don't understand. It's not to save money, because you'll save money by not spending all the R&D on this thing and just throwing in either an automatic or just a manual, you know, things that already exist with a clutch. (laughs) Or it's not for car enthusiasts, because car enthusiasts probably want a clutch. It's It's not for people who need to save money and drive a not manual car because again just throw in an automatic so it's for people who want to pretend to be car enthusiasts by shifting in an h pattern that's it i can't think of anything else (laughs) (laughs) yeah I'm, i'm just trying to visualize like how unfulfilling it will be to drive this it's the same thing in my evo it's like it's it's an it's an automated manual. But yeah. you don't have to do a fucking H pattern, just plus Yeah. The point of an paddles. automated <laughs> manual Yeah, exactly. The point of an automated manual <laughs> is that it's faster than Huber reaction because you just have to click a paddle. Nothing. Yeah. But you, you have to reach down, <laughs> row a gear. This is dumb. <laughs> Why is it this is a thing? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> yeah. So honestly, if if someone from Hyundai's actually listening to this, I would like honestly, I want to have an actual conversation. We're not going to roast you or anything like that. I yeah. want to understand where this decision came from. Why yeah. you guys are doing this? Because to me, and I feel like just based on like the forums that we're on on Facebook, the re- reception of this is just like, what the fuck is this for? It, it's well, pointless. It's so pointless. Right? Like, I don't... This thing doesn't... I would, I would think this thing doesn't have, like, an auto mode either, right? No. So Probably it would... an H pattern. Like, if you wanted the feeling of rowing through an H pattern, but you wanted the auto mode as well, I guess an H pattern on a single manual... Like, a single automated manual, single clutch automated manual would be <laughs> some sort of compromise for you. But if there's no man... Like, if there's no auto mode, what the heck is the point? I want to assume that this is probably... I'm going to guess that this is probably going to have more issues... Like yeah, just I would guess with so. it, its actual function than I don't know what they're trying. They're trying to be like Apple or something like of the car world, and it's just like everything they're doing is so dumb. Like seriously, if you work at Hyundai, please, honestly, we want to know. <laughs> come talk to us. We want to know what this is for. Because right yeah. now we think it's dumb. Maybe you could enlighten us. <laughs> yeah, no bias during our conversation. We want to actually understand why this is happening yeah. because it's dumb. <laughs> Uh, all right. Next up on the news, uh, let's you know a bit about this car, Andrew. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Subaru Twenty Two B, the holy grail of STIs. Yes. So there is currently a Subaru Twenty Two B on sale on a I think it's a UK website. Don't uh-huh. quote me on that. Called uh, Appreciating Classics. Going for two hundred and ninety-five thousand pounds, which is three hundred and seventy thousand U.S. dollars. Uh, Andrew, can you tell us a bit about what the Impreza Twenty Two B is? Uh, so it's like from the factory. It's it's a two-door uh, WRX, right? From the factory, it gets widened fenders. It gets like the whole STI interior, the STI motor, and all that. It has a shorter wheelbase than like a standard four-door obviously it's essentially it's like a very purebred rally car from subaru Mm. it was a pretty limited run and it has a pink badge (laughs) the day i remember andrew showing me the 22b Mm. i immediately was like i want one because it looks amazing yeah two-door sti like you can't beat that come on (laughs) right it's it's so so good especially but this motor trend article right now uh that's discussing this Title, would you pay 370000 for a Subaru, uh, the 22B thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they're smoking over in the UK or wherever this place is from, that's some strong shit, man. <laughs> Dude, they're, they're... It's only they're got 271 sm- miles on it. I don't give a fuck. They're smoking dicks <laughs> asking for... <laughs> 
almost half a million dollars for a fucking <laughs> no for a Subaru. <laughs> Dude, I bet you like the one in the Subaru museum, like the the one with the plaque zero zero zero, wouldn't even sell for that much. Because it's a Japanese car. Let's be honest. The sad thing is, okay, Japanese cars don't get the love that they may deserve. Like, I think Jay Little once said this. The, he was talking about the Honda S600, this little tiny roadster made in the 60s. He's like, he was like, if this had a Porsche badge on it, it would be like mm-hmm. hundreds of thousands of dollars more expensive. Mm-hmm. This is a Japanese car. They don't have that sort of heritage. I mean, I want one. I would love this one. For sure, but for $370,000? No. <laughs> no. I just I mean, I guess like some Japanese cars are gaining some some of this classic status finally. Yeah. Uh S2000s, uh, like very low mileage ones, 50, 60, mm-hmm. 70 grand. Um yeah. but 370 grand? Yeah. Come That's on. Not happening. Last bit of news, and this is on behalf of Mr. Parth. Mercedes AMG, they have launched their new AMG GT Black Series. Um, it's got 720 horsepower, uh, slight facelift, lots of aero mods, uh, twin turbo V8, and a top speed of over 200 miles an hour. Right off the bat for me, when Parth sent me this link, I was like, that's a European Dodge Viper ACR. <laughs> Oh my gosh. The more you look at it, legit. Yeah. That's what it's it looks like. <laughs> yeah, it's a Viper with a Mercedes badge. <laughs> to me, it, that instantly is just like, uh, eh, I bet this will perform just as good. I, I don't know. I don't know anything that much about the ACR, to be honest, but um, it does look really cool. Yeah, it looks cool. I mean, lots of aero. Uh, you and I are probably not the ones to be talking about this car because. No. We don't, I don't care that much. <laughs> care that much just about Mercedes, especially. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's a good looking car. It's probably a fast car. It's a cool car. But Mercedes, they never do it for me for some reason. No, me neither. I don't know I, what it is. I, I really don't know. I'm, it might be because for me, the lineup's way too confusing. Like, I don't know where this <laughs> falls. They just make a bunch of, like, gray shapes to me, to be honest. I mean. Yeah. Hey, no, no, no hate if you love Mercedes. I just, I just, it, they don't do it for me. Yeah. I don't know, Parth, you're going to have to uh, speak <laughs> Come, on this one. Right, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, like, I honestly, I tried. Uh, but to me, this looks like a, a Dodge Viper ACR. And <laughs> to be frankly honest, uh, ACR is more interesting to me than this is. Uh, Ooh, what's that? <laughs> it's got an orange traction control dial thing. That looks yeah, cool. Yeah, I wonder. If, that is actually kind of cool um, because just on my like very little knowledge of Mercedes and the whole Black Series, my understanding is that the Black Series before were just total burnout machines. Oh, yeah. They just eat through tires because they had too yeah. much power. Yeah, like which made them really cool. Drive them on a truck, but you couldn't <laughs> properly drive it on a track. Yeah, exactly. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. gonna say something, but I don't know what I was gonna say because I don't know <laughs> anything about these things. Yeah. We don't yeah. know anything about German cars. I don't. Yeah, I really don't. I'm sorry, Parth. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, well, you heard the specs. <laughs> uh, Andrew provided you with the updated specs uh, in terms of news-wise. So, you know, there we go. Doing our job. Yeah. But just <laughs> don't really have anything else to say about it. <laughs> it's not that interesting. For I mean, me. that's all. The, for, for, yeah, for me, fast Mercedes, they, they just big V8s. Uh, mm-hmm. They have an AMG badge on it. They burn through tires. <laughs> they're fast yeah there we go and maybe we won't understand until we own one so yeah Parth, the uh the the german car news i'm gonna leave that with you buddy yeah that that's on you unless <laughs> the germans make like a bronco then i will be excited <laughs> well yeah uh with that being said that's gonna be our show for this week uh thank you guys as always for listening 
Um, you can find us again at the curbside podcast.com where you'll find links to uh, everything where we're on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn. I think that's it. Yep. And uh, once again, you can hit us up on social media at Instagram at the curbside podcast. You can follow us on Twitter um, at curbside pod. Also on Facebook, uh, we post all of our YouTube clips on there and whatnot. So check us out. Yeah. And thank you, as always, to Kid Dope for our theme song, Fast Cars and Wild Hearts. I am Jeff. I am Andrew. Uh, Remember, drive safe. And life is too short to drive boring cars. (laughs) 